Hi, this is Coach Chuck of the National Free Flight Society's Youth Development Program. We welcome you to today's video. Uh, the purpose of these videos is to help uh, newcomers to indoor flying, including students in scholastic competitions such as uh, Science Olympiad, uh, get started in their building and flying processes. Uh, if you get something out of this video, we'd appreciate it if you like the video and subscribe to our YouTube channel so you'll be notified of new videos as they come along. Today, we'll take a look at gluing, glue management, and as it relates to weight management. Gluing is the number one area I've seen where students struggle to maintain weight control on their airplane. It's very easy to add a lot of weight uh, without adding strength when uh, performing the gluing operations. Uh, gluing for weight management takes careful application of the glue, but also the selection of the right glue for the right area and using the right tools for the glue. Gluing requires a perfect joint to start with. Uh, the glues themselves are not strong and if the glue bridges a poor joint, it becomes brittle and actually a weak part of the plane and it adds a lot of weight. So the balsa must form a tight joint to begin with before starting your gluing operation. The first glues we'll look at are the CAs or cyanoacrylates. Uh, these are also known as super glues. And this one is your thin uh, CA. The thin CA is useful on uh, medium weight planes such as Science Olympiad, uh, the P-18s, uh, and careful application, they're useful on uh, lighter planes such as limited penny planes. Uh, these glues are especially useful when you have carbon structures such as uh, your uh, spars on some Science Olympiad planes, uh, which may be a, a carbon uh, preformed structure, either a strip or a tube or a rod. Some of the other glues we'll look at don't necessarily stick well to carbon. So if you have carbon structures on the plane, you'll, you'll probably use the thin CA. Um, one of the issues with the CAs is they do not evaporate. So what you put onto the plane uh, stays on the plane. The glue cures from lack of oxygen, and so a tight joint is necessary to get the glue to, to kick off or cure, uh, but uh, anything you put on there stays. Uh, sometimes we call the CAs liquid lead because they are uh, quite heavy compared to some other glue options. The other CA that's commonly used is a medium CA, and uh, this is sometimes called uh, gap filling. This one's uh, Zappa Gap is the brand. Uh, the gap filling glue is used when, typically when you don't have a good joint to begin with and you need the, the glue to bridge that gap. Unfortunately, that makes for a very brittle and weak joint and it adds a whole lot of weight. So uh, very, very few locations in which we'll use the gap filling glue on indoor uh, airplanes. Uh, one place that I uh, do use it is in a contest situation to repair damage where the surfaces you're trying to bring back together have already been contaminated with CA glue and they're not fitting well and you need a quick solution. Uh, the, the gap filling CA can help out in this situation, but it's an emergency situation for repair. It's not something I would use on a regular basis. The next type of glue are the nitrocellulose based glues. Uh, this one is Duco. It's available from Amazon and from uh, some local hardware or hobby stores. This uh, glue is a solvent based glue. Uh, and most of the, the content of the glue evaporates uh, after you apply the glue. Um, it's uh, got the advantage of being remeltable with acetone, uh, and, and that way you can reposition or replace parts without adding any significant weight. Uh, so this, uh, this glue uh, is the lightest way to build uh, indoor models, and I strongly recommend it. The last glue we'll look at is your 3M77 spray adhesive. 
This glue is used for applying the covering to the airplane and uh, it can be sprayed on uh, in a very light coating or it can be thinned with a solvent and brushed on uh, for a lighter approach. So let's look at uh, application of the glues, starting with the uh, thin CA. One of the things about these glues is you never want to apply the glue directly from the bottle. Uh, even with a, a small capillary tip on the bottle, it's impossible to control the flow of the glue to the extent necessary to keep your weight under control on an indoor model. Uh, therefore, you, you want to uh, put some glue on some wax paper or uh, some plastic and use a tool to apply the glue. We'll, we'll show you that in just a minute. As I mentioned, the uh, joint preparation is critical. And uh, it, part of that is fixturing your joints. So uh, in, in my case, I'm using a piece of basswood. This is 32nd inch uh, basswood purchased at Hobby Lobby, and it's laying along the plans, right along the uh, leading edge location, and I actually ground a little bit of a, a curved spot where each rib goes, and that uh, is so that when we glue the joint, uh, any glue that flows around the joint doesn't glue your leading edge to your um, uh, basswood fixture. So. That, that's a helpful way of doing that. Um, on this leading edge, in order to get it to stand up against the um, basswood there, I use a pin with a block of wood. And I use the pin standing straight up and against the spar to hold it against that uh, basswood. And then this block of wood, you can slide it down against the spar lightly so you don't deform the spar. But that'll hold it all in place at the right height against your, your building surface. And um, uh, the pin aligns it against the uh, basswood. Um, in order to prepare your joint, you can either sand it uh, or you can cut it with a very sharp blade. And what I like to do is put the blade against my finger and then I can roll my finger to control where along the wood that blade goes. You might put a little dot with a, a fine marker on there where you want to cut it, but you can very carefully slice away and, and you can get another thin slice. Better to slice five times than to slice too short. So now we've got a nice vertical and, and by vertical, I mean vertical compared to the cord line of the wing, not perpendicular to the, the wood here because the wood is curved and the, on the rib. And so vertical to fit against the leading edge is not going to be perpendicular to the top and bottom of that rib. We can trial fit it and make sure it fits at both ends. And you want it so it, it fits in snugly but it doesn't fit in so tight that it bows up the rib so you you'll trim it several times until you get just the right fit now what i like to do is stand the rib up with a couple of nuts it's just enough weight to hold it there we've got a good joint now where the rib joins the leading edge and now we're going to add the glue and we already mentioned that you're not going to add glue directly to the joint from the bottle. Instead, I put a small drop onto a lid. This is just a disposable lid. Um, it can be from margarine or whatever. Um, I'm from New Mexico, so green chili is the only way to go. We're just going to put a small drop of glue on that lid. Then the tool that we're going to use looks like this. Just a piece of balsa with two pins stuck through it. We, we usually wrap it with uh, a little bit of sewing thread just to keep the integrity of the end of the balsa so it doesn't split. And the pin tips come almost together here. And when you dip that into the glue, you end up carrying what might be a quarter of a drop of glue compared to what you might get out of a capillary tip on the bottle of the glue. Now we're going to 
take that tip and we're just going to touch the joint and you'll see the glue shoot out of the uh, tool here. I can touch the side of it. And the glue is into our joint. That's all the glue you need. That's, that's more than sufficient to do the job with CA. Uh, by using this capillary tool, you're able to get a minimum amount of glue into the joint. And by having a tight joint to begin with, the glue will be pulled out of this capillary by the capillary forces of the wood and drawn right into the joint. Now CA sets up rather quickly, so you can see that that joint is already complete. As we go to lighter weight planes, uh, weight control becomes even more important and the CAs are simply too heavy, especially when we're looking at a balsa to balsa joint. So this is where the duco or nitrocellulose glues come in. Um, this glue is uh, thin 50% with uh, acetone and then you need an applicator bottle. This particular bottle is just a um, about a one ounce uh, squeeze bottle off of Amazon with a lure lock cap. The lure lock is a medical cap used for syringes and the tip just goes on and screws on with about a half a turn. This hypodermic needle is a blunt end needle and this particular one I like it's a one inch long 25 gauge. The red indicates that it's a 25 gauge. The downside of this bottle is you need to seal up this needle somehow. And so you need to get an appropriate size piece of music wire. You can use guitar string. I believe this is a 9000s wire. And you need to always put that wire back into the end of the tube to seal it up. And as you can see, I've already bent the wire. Uh, it, becomes an issue and, and to change your flow rate of glue uh, you need to change tips to a different gauge. You can get an assortment of tip gauges make sure they're blunt and not sharp uh, from Amazon. So that's one option. The other option I've discovered more recently is this micro cementar uh, setup. This is available from uh, Indoor Free Flight Supply and it's really just a, um, a food coloring bottle with a aluminum um, a piece of tubing and heat shrink around that and then it's got a uh, capillary tip just like you'd get for your CA bottle but then it has this stainless steel wire that's going in through the, a small hole in the um, the heat shrink and when you push it all the way in the tip of the wire comes out here at the end and seals the tube. When you pull it back this long tube is actually tapered and you can pull this back to any point in that tube and get a controlled flow of uh, cement out the end of the tube. So I really like this because you can control it and the needle comes in from the back side and so it's self-cleaning on the uh, tip here. Uh, these are about uh, $12 a piece. They're cheaper if you buy three at a time. Now with the um, Duco type cement, uh, one thing you want to do is go ahead and pre-glue both surfaces. I got a little heavy there. Um, and what this does is it allows the glue to soak down into the, the wood and make a stronger bond. It's not entirely necessary for a big rib joint like this, uh, but on some of the more critical joints, say a, a rolled fuselage on an F1D, uh, you really want to uh, pre-wet the, the joint, let that dry a little bit, and then you can put your joint together. I've already cut it like we cut the other one. And then we can come in with our tip here and just add a little bit of the thin cement and that will wick into the joint. It'll re-soften the, the glue that we put on to begin with, make a very strong joint. 
if you're in a hurry, uh, especially on ribs like this, we, we sometimes just go ahead and, and glue them without pre-gluing. But pre-gluing will give you a, a definitely stronger glue. Um, you uh, need to let this set up for, for 10 to 15 minutes. It'll start grabbing in about a minute or so. But again, if you have nuts holding it up and have everything fixtured well, uh, that joint's not going to move and you can let it sit. And by the time you finish all the ribs on the wing and then go get a little snack, uh, that glue will be uh, set up enough to use it. I should mention that the uh, uh, nitrocellulose glue, like the Duco, uh, is not going to reach full strength until overnight, but it'll be plenty uh, strong enough to handle it within uh, five or ten minutes. So you can uh, move on to uh, your next steps in uh, covering your airplane uh, without waiting overnight. After we've let everything set up, we can remove our uh, fixture and uh, remove our pins. Um, so now we're ready to remove the structure. We've only put a couple of ribs on here, but usually I'll come in with a blade and just come underneath to make sure that we're not stuck to the uh, wax paper and then we can pull our structure out. Now we're going to use our 3M77 spray adhesive for our uh, structure to put the covering on. And you want to do this outside if possible. I have a large cardboard area here with um, sheets of, of typing paper or printer paper uh, that are laid down and I just put a new sheet on each time so your, your structure doesn't stick to the paper. And then um, John McGrath up in Colorado suggested that you fold a piece of paper so that there's a, a ridge here and you stand your, your uh, uh, frame up against that ridge to keep the frame from sticking to the paper. Then shake your, your glue just a little bit and when you spray it, you're not going to spray at it. You're going to spray across the covering just a few light spurts and let the, the uh, spray settle down onto it. To clear your nozzle at the end of your spray session, hold it upside down near the cardboard and spray it until it stops spraying liquid. Use very little adhesive this way, just enough to get a dusting on the surface. You can build up a lot of weight with 3M77, so you want to be careful about putting too much weight on. Now we've sprayed our framework. We're going to take it and place it onto our covering and just lightly run your fingers around the wood and it will stick on. You can see it's, it's well stuck there. Let that cure for 10 or 15 minutes before you try and trim the uh, covering. But that's all there is to spray in it and the, the important thing is I did not point the nozzle right at the wood. I pointed it so the, the cloud of glue would settle down onto the wood and then uh, there, there's plenty of, of glue on there. Now with the uh, 3M77, uh, even straight from the can and being very careful about your cloud of uh, glue, with the lightest airplanes, uh, say an F1D or a half gram of scraps, uh, where you use an OS film, which is an extremely thin covering, uh, spraying is going to give you too much weight. My kids were building their first F1Ds and they were adding about 80 milligrams of glue to the wing by spraying. It gave a strong joint, but that was way too much. So we started brushing the glue on instead. And what we do is we spray just a little bit of glue into a bottle after uh, tearing the bottle on a accurate scale, milligram scale. So we'll put maybe a quarter gram of spray in there, and that's just just a little spray, and then we thin it. We use uh, trichloroethylene. This is a very hazardous solvent, so you want to make sure it's well ventilated. Very hard to find. You're not going to find this at the hardware store. Uh, I found this at a gun shop. 
uh, it's for cleaning guns. Um, you can also use naphtha, which is available uh, at most hardware stores. Uh, and there may, may be other solvents you can use. The nice thing with the TCE or the naphtha is it will not dissolve the um, uh, glue joints made with your uh, Duco cement, but it will dissolve the 3M77. So then I add the, the solvent in on top of the uh, little spurt of um, 3M77, shake it up well, and this is my thickest mixture. It's a 32 to 1 by weight. Uh, on the F1Ds, we use as little as 200 to 1 uh, thinner to uh, glue, uh, so there's barely any color in it. Uh, and we got the F1Ds down to uh, 6 to 8 milligrams added for the wing instead of our lightest spraying, which was about 80 milligrams. So it's a, a good way to really save weight, but you have to work with some hazardous solvents. So uh, be careful. Uh, you probably want to wear rubber gloves and make sure you're in a well-ventilated room. With the uh, thin 3M77, you're going to use a brush. Get it wet with the glue and then just hold down the, the structure against your covering and lay the brush into the gap there. Don't try and do it with the point of the brush. Just lay the brush down into the gap. And if there's any curvature at all, you're going to have to hold the joint for up to a minute in order to get a good bond there. I usually uh, glue the leading and trailing edges first, work along them, and then I'll come back and, and glue the ribs. Another approach we've used with this is you can paint a layer of this uh, thinned 3M77 right onto the uh, top of the rib structure uh, before bringing it to the covering and then uh, come in with just solvent rather than the solvent mix. So you would use the solvent uh, glue mix to wet the surface and you can either paint it on or you can put individual dots along the glue like I mean, along the wood like that and then you're going to use the uh, the solvent just like I'm using the, the glue solvent mix here and that will re-soften the, the glue that you put on the wood just enough to stick to the covering. Um, that's probably the way to get the absolute lightest joint but we've found that we can do just as well by applying the solvent uh, glue mix uh, to the gap between the, the wood and the covering. You just need to use a small brush and be very careful. Don't just start splashing it everywhere. Just run it into the gap and let it wick into the, the joint between the wood and the covering. We hope you've enjoyed this video today. The important point being that glue can add tremendous amounts of weight to your airframe and that careful control of your glue application uh, can save uh, a lot of weight in your finished product. Uh, generally, taking glue straight from the bottle, straight from the can, is not going to be uh, weight effective. You need a very good joint before you apply any glue and let whatever type of glue you're using wick into that joint. Don't try to bridge a gap with glue that's adding a lot of weight and not adding any strength. If you cut it too short and it's not reaching, say ribs not reaching both of your uh, uh, spars, uh, throw the rib out, get another piece of wood and try again. Um, it's incredibly important to have a, a good tight joint to begin with. Control of the glue can make a difference in uh, between a seriously overweight plane and a highly competitive plane. So uh, try these techniques out. Uh, make yourself the uh, tool for the CA to apply it using uh, two pins. Uh, get yourself some squeeze bottles uh, and thin your uh, Duco glues 50-50 and control the amount of glue you get onto the surface. Till next time, don't forget to like us and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Let your friends know about it, and we'll see you at the flying site.